Hello, I'm Chrissy Seaton. Today I would like to talk a little more about the Noahide commandment of uh, the prohibition against theft. Now, this topic takes uh, in a lot of information, some of which couldn't possibly be discussed in one video, but I do want to outline how broad this topic is and it will make you think about things that perhaps you hadn't considered were theft before. So I'll just continue on and um, uh, maintaining in your mind that theft is present around us in every aspect of our life, uh, where we work, in our community, within our family perhaps, and um, it has many forms and actions. The punishment for theft is extremely severe and we can see an example of that in Genesis chapter 6 verse 13 and that surrounded the behaviour of the people in the generation of Noah's time. Their unrestrained theft and sinfulness in general was what brought the flood upon them, the destruction of the world. But the actual sin that they were uh, punished for was their um, unbridled theft. And I'll explain a little bit about that. The, um, apart from the obvious meaning of the word theft or robbery, we think of someone stealing your money or your wallet or some of your possessions, and that is so and correct. But I want you to consider some other examples that perhaps you hadn't thought about before. So let's think about kidnapping and rape. That comes under the prohibition of theft. And why is that so? Well, it's because someone is taking your body to use for their own purposes and it's being taken against your will. So therefore it comes under the prohibition against theft. Another example would be using someone else's intellectual property and claiming it as yours. That's theft. You're stealing from someone else's hard work. The other thing also comes under that is cheating in exams. That's a form of theft. Claiming someone else's idea is yours is theft. We also look at other things uh, from the point of view of um, in the workplace, perhaps. Now, withholding someone's wages is called theft or delaying the payment of contractual arrangements. That comes under theft. Um, the other thing, uh, another good example would be, uh, for instance, in Australia, we have compulsory superannuation that is paid in, a percentage of our wages is paid into the fund by our employer. Now, if an employer withholds that portion of your wage and does not pay it in in a timely manner to the uh, designated superannuation fund, that is considered as theft. And that is because that delay in placing that money in your designated fund is also prohibiting you from getting the accurate amount of interest over that time. So that is considered theft. There is also um, the idea of uh, perhaps you're going into McDonald's to get um, a hamburger or whatever, um, you uh, go then to the counter to help yourself to the um, straws and serviettes and salt and pepper and what have you. But you're in there alone, you've only got one cup, you've only got one meal, so, but never mind, I'll just take a dozen or so of these straws, I'll take them home with me. I'll take a handful of these serviettes, that'll save me buying some. 
I'll take a few salt and peppers as well. That is stealing. That is stealing. Another thing to think about is that innocent biro that we're provided with at work. A lot of employers provide stationery, including biros. So at the end of the day, you might inadvertently have it in your pocket and you go home, you empty out your pockets, along comes the biro, and, oh, I'll keep that. It's a harm. Well, it is harmful. It's theft. It's harmful to you and harmful to your employer. So you really should put that biro back in your bag or whatever the next day and return it because it is not yours to keep. And so these are small things you may think, but they all come under the prohibition of theft. Another thing uh, that sometimes will happen uh, is that you may be given too much change. You may go to the supermarket, uh, pay for your groceries, etc., and the lady on the checkout or the gentleman gives you back an extra $10 or whatever by mistake. Well, it's not correct to say, ooh, goody, goody, goody. Look that. That is thieving. That is stealing. You should turn around and hand back that extra change, $10, whatever it is, and say, you have given me too much change, I'm returning it to you. And you're returning it to you, not because you think there's a surveillance camera there watching you, or someone might be in the queue behind you watching you. You are returning that $10 because God has commanded you to do that. God commanded you. It's also theft to take advantage of someone who has poor intellectual capabilities. Uh, for instance, you're conning money out of them or selling them something that's overpriced. That's, that's theft. That is theft. Making false claims, for instance, about an item or an animal you're selling. For instance, an example would be you are selling a horse to someone who's a little, uh, a little bit unsuspecting, perhaps not, uh, not terribly knowledgeable about horses, and you say this horse is um, only five year old, when in fact it's fifteen or twenty five years old. Now that is theft, also wrong. You should not do these things, and the punishment is severe, not, a, not only physically, but upon your soul. You, you must not do these things. Those innocent extra serviettes or straws are still stealing. No matter which way you try to explain it or describe it, it is theft. Just before I end this video, I want to draw your attention back to the flood in Noah's generation. And you can find this reference in uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse 13. And this is where it states that they were punished because of their robbery. I'll read the verse for you. The end of all flesh has come before me. Because of the world is full of robbery, and behold, I will destroy the world. I'm going to read that again. The end of all flesh has come before me because the world is full of robbery and behold, I will destroy the world. Just let that sink in and give it some thought. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.